All right, chapter 3.1 is the tangent ratio. It starts off with just the tangent ratio. Um, and the first thing you need to do is know how to label sides. So from your angle, and this is the Greek letter theta, this is what is called our, whoops, our reference angle. So this is the angle that we're looking from, and this is the angle that we're going to label our sides from. It changes, your reference angle changes depending on the question. So from our reference angle, we have the opposite, which is straight across from it. We also have this side here, which is the longest side, which is right across from the right angle, which is called the hypotenuse. Oops. Hypotenuse, and again, it's right across from the right angle. So I have the opposite, which is right across from my angle, my reference angle. I have the hypotenuse, which is right across from the right angle. Then I have this third side, which is actually right next to the angle, which we call the adjacent. Okay, And the tangent ratio of my angle, so of angle theta, is equal to my opposite over my adjacent. That's the ratio. So opposite side over my adjacent side. That's the ratio. That's your fraction. That's what you divide. Now, using your calculator, if it asks you to just say, find tan 63 or find tan 13 or find tan 85, then what you do is you bring up your calculator. <clears> the <throat> first thing you have to do is make sure your calculator is in degree mode. Um, if you're unsure of whether your calculator is in degree mode, most of them have a little D up above if you're using a scientific calculator. And most of them have a button that says DEG. And you just want to hit it until there's a D on your screen somewhere or a DEG. Um, usually it's short, short form. Once it's in degree mode, then all you do is you type in, now some calculators are different. This online calculator, I type in 63. Then I hit the TAN button. Some calculators, you hit the TAN button first. Then you hit 63. This calculator, though, works like this. So I get the TAN of 63 is 1.96. And that's it. Next one, tan of 13, type in 13, hit your tan button, 0 0.23. And the last one I have here, which is 85 degrees, tan, 11.43. So if you have a different kind of calculator, work on your calculator, make sure you can get these answers. All right, rating ratios and solving angles. This is probably the most confusing part that I've seen. I, it's not that confusing, but it just seems like people get, or students get mixed up with, when do I rate the ratio and when do I rate the angle? If it asks you for the ratio and it asks you for tan A, after doing these so many times, you get used to finding angle A. This is the big thing you want to find. You always want to find the angle, but sometimes you're just asked to find tan A. First thing, where is A? Up here. This is my reference angle. Now, what was tan again? Tan was opposite, which is over here, over my adjacent. Remember that my right angle is here, and that means this side here is my hypotenuse. Okay, So from angle A, my reference angle, I'm looking at the opposite, which is straight across, which is 12 divided by my adjacent, which is right next to it, which is 15. <clears throat> so the ratio is just 12 over 15, and you leave it like that. You could divide the two 12 divided by 15, but you don't find the actual angle. You only find the ratio. Okay. I'll go ahead and I'll do the angle now. When you're trying to find the angle, what you do is you first of all divide the ratio. So you go 12 divided by 15, figure, it out, what, figure out what it is as a decimal. And then to solve for an angle, you have to use the inverse button or second, fun sec second function button or shift. You hit that before you hit tan. So as long as you have 0.8, you hit your inverse before you hit tan. And you should get the angle as long as your calculator is in degree mode of 38.7. Okay, so make sure you can get th that answer there. Some calculators, like I said, you put in inverse tan first or shift 10 first, then you type in 0.8. All right, now let's go from 
angle C. So now we're looking at angle C, the reference is going to change. Instead of being from A, we're now looking at angle C. I'll use a different color, I'll use green. So C is down here. This time my opposite is over here. Notice my hypotenuse never ever changes. Opposite is up here. That means this side here is my adjacent and you can see that because it's right next to my angle. So opposite is going to be 15, adjacent is 12, so I write it like that. That's my tan C, that is my ratio. If it doesn't ask for the angle, that's what it wants. If it asks for the angle, then you have to go on your calculator, you have to type in 15 over 12 or figure out what it is as a decimal. Use your inverse button and then we're dealing with tan, so I hit the tan button. I get 51.3. Okay, let's do one more example over here so we can really be clear on this. All right, so first one I'm looking at is tan G. Here is G. First of all, we have to figure out, okay, there is my hypotenuse. Just label that so you know. There's my opposite. That means this side here is my adjacent. That means I have 13.1 over 6.2. Remember, it's always opposite over adjacent. That's the ratio for the angle. You type in 13.1 divided by 6.2. I get 2.11, then I have to use the inverse or shift tan button and I get 64.7. And just make sure that your angle makes sense. If you get an angle of like 2, probably not the answer, right? That means you've forgotten to hit the inverse and the tan button. Alright. Now we're going to do the next one which is tan E, which is over here. That's my reference angle. My opposite is 6.2 this time, changes. My adjacent is 13.1. That means my ratio changes from 6.2 over 13.1. People ask me all, or students ask me all the time, how do you know what the ratio is? How do you know which is the opposite? How do you know which is the adjacent? Well, first of all, hypotenuse never changes. Opposite is always straight across from your reference angle. There's always given, the reference angle is always given to you. Right? You're always asked to find tan E or tan G. So you know which one should be the opposite and which one should be the adjacent. 6.2 divided by 13.1. Is that of the angle? No, I haven't done the inverse tan yet. 25.3. Let's just do one little thing here before I move on. What should all the angles in a triangle add up to? All angles add to 180 degrees. You may remember that from grade 9. So let's just check. I have my 90 degree angle there, plus I have my 64.7, plus I have my 25.3. Great! They all add up to 180, so they're good. I've done it correctly. You can always check yourself like that, right? All right, so that's it for the lesson. Now I'm going to give you a few hints for the quiz. There's a there's a question on the quiz that gives you a picture of a or gives you a description of a tower and says a guy wire is attached to the tower, 30 I think it's 30 meters above the ground, or it might be in feet I can't remember. So 30 meters above the ground, and it says what is the angle with the ground? Keep in mind that angle with the ground is the angle down here. So you're actually looking for this angle down here, theta. So that's your reference angle. From my reference angle, I have the opposite, and I have the adjacent. Now that I have the opposite and adjacent labeled, you should be able to go through and solve that question. That's all the hints I'm going to give you for that quiz, because I think the rest of the questions are pretty easy. It's just a matter of how do you set up the picture given the description. So read through the description, look at the diagram I have here, and make sure you understand how I drew it. And that's it for section 3.1.